Hey everybody. Um, good morning, everybody. This is uh, I'm in the I'm in Kingman, Arizona. I'm in the powerhouse. It used to be a powerhouse, but now it's a museum. It's a Route 66 museum. I really wanted to hit this on my eastbound trip, and I, I didn't get a chance. And I was actually considering bypassing it today. Um, that's signed by somebody. I don't know who, <laughs> but I was actually considering bypassing it today. But I thought, you know. This is my last day actually exploring Route 66 for a while, so what better way to do it than do it at a really good museum I've heard a lot about. Uh, this is, I mean, I, stuff like this. My father would love this. Um, those that know my dad would know exactly what I'm talking about. But this is interesting how it shows some of the early uh, pioneer days on what people might have experienced because, as I mentioned in earlier videos, Route 66 was really composed of prior trails, not even roads that uh, were used to incorporate or were used for traveling. Uh, dirt roads, trails, paths. Uh, I, I know something there's, they, had, they go by so many names. I can't remember. Um, oh man, American Trails Highway. I think the Mormon Trail was part of it. National Trails. They have a lot of maps in here and I'm a real map person. Oh, this is great. Oh, wow. Okay, this is cool. This is cool. This looks like a rendition of the Jode, the Jode family. Um, remember I was talking about Grapes of Wrath? And remember I showed you guys the Grapes of Wrath? I didn't expect to see this. But remember I showed you the Grapes of Wrath car? I think I was in Springfield, Illinois. Um, this is not the same make and model because this is a Chevrolet. The other one was a different one. But I just stumbled upon a display of uh, Grapes of Wrath. So how interesting for me to end my, my trip, my segment on Route 66, come across this. Just now, I didn't know, I was not expecting this. This is a surprise to me. And I might even, I might even uh, pause it. And there were some come up, there were some other museums I had been to that uh, portrayed the vehicles and the families traveling through the Dust Bowl and vehicles like this. That wagon shot I shot earlier, there was a wagon, all the things hanging off of it. This is basically the same type of living. It's just uh, with motors, motor vehicle. You know, you got grandma here making, you know, it looks like got some potatoes. I mean, this is the way these people lived. I mean, what I, what I went through in the challenges what I went through in the challenges were nothing like these people. And I'm not sure what I was expecting or looking for or why I'm so enthralled or engrossed on the Dust Bowl, 1930, 1940 and the Grapes of Wrath. But, you know, maybe it's the black and white photos. It's just uh, historically impacting. I mean, I think photography is, is coming into its own travel, roads. I mean, just look at the way these things were packed. There's one lady, and I can't remember her name. She did a lot of photographing of Route 66 um, during, the, during those depression years. And that's what I want to you know, keep in mind is that 1930, 1940, the United States as a whole was experiencing a depression. That was also the era of uh, prohibition, no alcohol, the underground, uh, mobsters, uh, Technology was kind of being pushed forward with modernizations of motor uh, motor vehicles and aviation. Uh, this this kills me. Why would you why would you have chicken wire? Why would they why were they carrying chicken wire? Oh, does this look familiar, everybody? Apparently, I wasn't the only one to experience a flat on Route 66. I better go tell the people that's cooking on the other side before they go in the morning. They got to come back over here and fix the flat. They can call AAA possibly. Do not call um, Good Sam Towing. They'll never get there. So, yeah, you may want to take care of that flat before you push off in the morning. <laughs> so, but very, very interesting. Uh, oh, here we go. <laughs> Asbestos shingles. <laughs> John's Manville, asbestos shingles and roofing. <laughs> hey, remember I was at another museum and I stood next to these. The, uh, I stood next to uh, one of these big fuel pump things. I mean, look how tall these things, this is real, this is real thing. Look how tall these things were. That just amazes me. I'm probably gonna have to, oh, look at the little girl looking out the back window. 
and I saw a lot of these um, Burma Shave signs. This apparatus here, I've actually saw some cars cruising on Route 66 with, this is an air conditioner, air conditioning. I actually saw some classic cars on Route 66 that would travel with those. This is a Chapman. What's interesting to note that if I would have to break down Route 66, I would do something similar to this where you had the Dust Bowl migration people, migrant workers in that one. But then there's a, there's a period where, where World War II had a big impact on Route 66 and then became the American road trip. American road trip on Route 66. Oh, okay, Richfield. If you guys are traveling Route 66 and you get into San Bernardino, you start traveling westbound on Foothill Boulevard in the city of Upland, there was a matter of fact, I wouldn't doubt it if this is the uh, rendition of the restored one in Upland, a Richfield gas station and now it's a museum. Richfield eventually became Arco. Arco bought out two companies. One was Richfield, and I do not remember the other one, but uh, Richfield was noted by this bright yellow. But the, um, uh, <laughs> oh, but yeah, anyways, Arco bought out Richfield and another gas company. I saw a lot of these when I was traveling from uh, Seligman out to Kingman on the old Route 66, a lot of the Burma Shave signs, uh, as they, they staggered them to send a message. Pretty cool. You got an idea of what the mercantile would look like? It's very quiet here. There's a mural on the other side that I'll uh, pan around to. It just seems like, uh, I would say, I guess one thing, one thing that fascinates me from being a road of uh, migration and depression and, and heartache to a road of all of a sudden became the California uh, destination and a family vacation road trip. So I'm going to spin this around and I'm going to show you this artist renditioning of, of what, what Route 66 was like. So people traveling, really cool. Snow cap, been there. I went there on my way out. I'm sure, I'm sure there's other uh, notable Route 66 um, depictions here. Diners, a lot of diners I went to. Abandoned motels I've seen. Oh, here, this is yesterday. Twin Arrows, that was yesterday's. Uh, fortunately for me, I did not, I did not meet him. I did not meet this guy. I think they're looking for me, but did not meet him. So if you're watching, I can't tell you where I'm going next. All right, I'm gonna pause real quick and go down the stairs. Okay, I came downstairs and that was just the um, Route 66 upstairs. I'm gonna go back up and take some pictures in a moment. Downstairs, it looks like an electrical vehicle museum. And what's interesting, some of these electrical vehicles are from a long time ago. I mean, look at, look at these things. But one thing that, I guess if you associate Route 66, Route 66, you gotta associate uh, the automobile uh, camping and camping courts were in the earlier days, uh, motor courts and motels, diners, and the uh, gas stations, gas stations and service stations. But definitely the auto, wow, look at this thing. Definitely the automobile played a big part um, in why people enjoy Route 66. They want to take their cars on there now and they want to, uh, See the type of cars that might have been traveled on it. This big rocket looking thing, I gotta go back. I don't know what it was. I just wanted to give you guys something different to look at than me while I'm recording. Antique EV replica. So I guess these are mainly all, look at this. I guess these are mainly all electrical. Kawasaki. I'm not, I'm not kidding. A little bit different from my Kawasaki. It does look like it's all electrical. Look at this, look at these batteries. And I don't see a fuel tank. This is a cool, I don't know if that's electrical or not. It says electrical car museum, so that might be. Elwell Parker Electrical Company. I guess so. Looks like a formula racer, electrical. 
I mean, this looks pretty cool. Let me get a good shot on this guy. There's a movie. He said it's an hour long. I'm going to guess I've seen that movie. I've seen a lot of Route 66 movies. But I'm going to go check it out. Like, these are all electrical cars. What is, hold on. Let me see what this... Let me see what this rocket looking thing is. Let's walk back real quick. All right, hello. All right, so Ohio State University, speeding toward the future. This is called the, the Buckeye Bullet 2.5 is a student built, student created alternative fuel race car from the Ohio State University. Wow. Awesome, awesome design. You know, I think it's, I, I ate breakfast this morning at uh, Mr. D's diner and I ate, there, I ate there at dinner on my way out of town because I stayed in Kingman. And that place and this place <laughs> do not have, I think it's hotter in here than it is outside. Oh, this is cool. I'll get, that, I'll get this thing for my daughters. They can take to school. <laughs> or you can take it on a double date. You know, I think this is pretty much it for the museum. I just want to get another shot of this. Awesome looking concept thing or alternate fuel race car. All right, I'm actually gonna mosey on back up, wrap this up. Smaller than I thought, but like I said, these people do a really good job on quality and, and quantity, uh, not quantity, but quality of, of what they display. Okay, so I actually I came back upstairs to wrap this up. Um, like I said, smaller but really worthwhile doing. I'm glad I came up. This is my last, uh, for this trip anyways, my last Route 66 documentary, film, information thing, video that I'll be doing. And I'm kind of caught up my own thoughts, not emotional really, but caught up my own thoughts on uh, my trip right now. So I'm gonna do some still photos so I get them on Facebook. My next stop or my next uh, location will probably be, do, probably be Hoover Dam. So, like I said before everybody, and like I always say, like, subscribe, get out there and ride if that's your passion, or whatever your passion is, get out and do it because life's an adventure. Don't let it pass, your by, don't let it pass you by, and may your journey be a good one.